Horizon Chess won't see reacts on this is how Ukraine's invasion turned Russian civilians against Putin by on the military show. Is this really happened? Or is it like exaggerated title? Because uh, I think I remember like, a, I don't know how few years ago or like it was this, this year, I don't know. But a, a lot of Russians uh, kind of support uh, the attack, whether it's because, I don't know, they don't have the full information or something or whether the polls are not accurate or something, I don't know. But that was the case. So is that is that shifting now? Is that turning? Maybe uh, Russia not winning in Ukraine immediately and like Russia itself being invaded might be the factor, right? And who knows, many other things might be the factor. But is this an accurate news? This is some military show. Uh, I don't know how unbiased this channel can be, but then again, how unbiased is any channel, right? Uh, every video I've seen from this channel looks like decent enough. Like I can see the same type of uh, detail from other channels as well so it's like accurate enough in that way but i don't know i don't know how any information on youtube is accurate enough but yeah i guess it's gonna be interesting usually was, you know if there is anything wrong in a video or something people always tells me in the comment like this is not true or exaggerated or like uh, you know how it's misunderstood or something so usually from the military show what i watch task and purpose is another real life lore usually they have the similar information like that so it's like true enough that's how i go so i don't know i don't know what the context is of this video but it's going to be interesting let's watch this one the footage is too graphic to share here Russian covered trucks, estimated to be carrying a company sized force of soldiers, sit on flat tires, still lined up in the neat, orderly row that they'd been traveling in just hours before. Damage to their vehicles immediately makes it obvious what fate befell them, pockmarked with small holes the size of large marbles. Sometime that morning, as the trucks hurried to bring a company sized force of reinforcements to counter the Ukrainian invasion of Kursk, a distant HIMARS, high mobility artillery rocket system operated by Ukrainian soldiers, went into action. It's not known how Ukraine managed to strike with such pinpoint precision miles inside Russian territory. There's growing evidence that you. I think we know. Murika, that's the. Is, is Russia going to blame America now? I think, because let's be honest, in all of this offensive. HIMARS have been like one of the key things. That's what I mean, right? Like latest technology and the insane technological weapons um, big countries like USA have can be overpowered in themselves. Look at the HIMARS working here, right? With the precision they attacked, with the precision they destroyed bridges and things. HIMARS are being used like as the core thing in a lot of places, right? And obviously there's US intelligence, basically the, all the satellites, all the firewires and things. So yeah, I'm pretty sure U.S. intelligence is behind this, U.S. equipment like HIMARS is behind this. So would Russia blame USA to interfering, right? And uh, I don't know. Every, every video like this comes on, I, I, I cry about it. Like, you know, would, would Russia like threaten nuclear war against USA or something if they suddenly say, like, okay, by the way, USA is the reason behind it or whatever, give ultimatums and shit. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Ukrainian hackers were able to break into the Russian traffic camera system, a massive network of cameras that allows for real-time monitoring of road and traffic conditions. This would give Ukraine eyes on every single highway and major roadway in the region, letting them precisely track the movements of Russian forces. Perhaps though it was a simple reconnaissance drone, of the type used in the thousands by both sides. Normally flying such a drone so far inside Russia would be risky, as its high altitude would make it easier to spot for Russian air defenses, even if small drones remain notoriously difficult to target and track. But Russia would have had a very hard time coordinating any response to an airborne incursion, given the massive electronic warfare blitzkrieg that Ukraine unleashed as its tanks and armored vehicles smashed through the two lines of trenches staffed with conscripts that were all that stood between Russia and a Ukrainian invasion force. Communications were cut off or degraded to the point of uselessness, radars jammed, Many may have tried to warn the ill-fated convoy as it rolled straight into a Ukrainian ambush, but jamming would have made radio communications difficult, if not impossible. Given the disorganized nature of Russia's defense of Kursk, it's likely nobody knew what was waiting for the convoy. Seemingly zero precautions had been taken to secure the movement of troops against Ukrainian precision attacks. Moments after being detected, rockets loaded with hundreds of submunitions were screaming through the sky, bursting open a mile or so from their target and unleashing what Iraqi forces facing American weapons would call steel rain. Vehicles were instantly shredded and dozens of troops sitting in the flatbeds never knew what hit them. 
Footage and photos from the strike show soldiers heaped on top of each other inside the trucks, falling over dead and onto each other on the floor of the truck as they were instantly killed. The photos and video would make its way around the internet within hours of being shot. Inside Russia, tight media controls would prevent them from being shown on television news reports or printed on newspapers, but many Russians have long ago adopted alternate means of keeping themselves informed. Platforms like Telegram, VK, WhatsApp, and even TikTok would host videos and photos of the carnage, reaching millions of Russian citizens. Most shocking of all, though, was the fact that this was not footage from the distant battlefields in Ukraine, and it wasn't contract Russian soldiers dead in their trucks. Many of these were conscripts, kids aged between 18 and 24, serving their oh, mandatory fuck. year of military service, and they had died a terrible death just meters away from the front lawns of Russian homes. Things would quickly take a turn for the worse. News of the Ukrainian invasion of Russia's Kursk region broke slowly. Tight media controls hamper the flow of information, but the ineptitude of Russian military command, its federal agencies, and a healthy amount of disinformation efforts by Ukrainian intelligence all serve to significantly obfuscate the reality inside the besieged oblast. It would be the evacuation of thousands of refugees that would make the situation irrefutable and bring national attention to the true scale of the Ukrainian attack. Even then, though, most military bloggers, a primary source of information for most Russians, downplayed the Ukrainian invasion or dismissed it entirely. After all, anti-Kremlin forces backed by Ukraine had launched raids into Russia before, and each time after snapping a few selfies, they fled back across the border before meeting significant resistance. By day three, though, it was becoming increasingly clear that the situation in Kursk was much, much more serious than was originally believed. President Vladimir Putin had dropped the ball Okay, seriously, I mean, every war, every time, it's like young people, like 18 to 24, it's just usually 18 to 20, if war stretches out a lot, that's just fucked up, man. 18-year-old is like a still kid, right? You can't just, it's like an imaginary line after you're 18, you're an adult. Not really. Teenagers are still teenagers, it's insane. But yeah, okay, first of all, VK, isn't the VK kind of controlled by the Russian government itself? I don't know. I thought that was the thing. I'm forgetting. Like, I'm pretty sure that was the case. I don't remember exactly. But yeah, the, uh, I think this NFKRZ. Yeah, that's the. It's, it's a Russian creator who, who's fled Russia now. Sometimes makes videos about this. I remember reacting to that. And there was a time where VK was mentioned. And I said somebody in the comments, I remember telling me, the VK is like kind of like owned by Russia itself. I don't know. So, how is somebody posting that and Russia is not controlling that? I don't know. That's interesting. But yeah, Telegram and things kind of make sense. But yeah, this is just the whole Russian thing, right? The whole Ukraine-Russia invasion. First of all, uh, made me think like all those, you know, tropes and things you have in your head about security thing. Like somebody invades, somebody's like immediate response is just immediately surrounded, right? Like you can't just, no, it's all disorganized. And I'm pretty sure a lot of countries around the world would be like that, right? Like if you suddenly invade somebody, people don't even know what's happening. And you just like, you know, communication jammed and things, right? So that's, that's another element uh, that, you, you know, became clear from this. And what surprised me from Russian side is that Russia should have prepared for this. Because a lot of Ukrainian cities and things are kind of destroyed. Uh, the, their whole country is kind of like destroyed with a Russian invasion. Now, if, if you take away f f something from somebody, they, they kind of have nothing to lose type of way. Especially like they're about to lose everything anyway. Right? If they lose, lose. I don't know how else to say that. So, of course, they're going to respond with an attack like this. Because they're going to be like, I want to show you how it feels type of way. So, Russia should have been prepared for that. And Russia should have been like, okay, if this many communication is being jammed and is showing up as jammed, which means that's where the Ukrainian army is running through, let's immediately divert forces and try to stop them. That didn't happen. That, that For a long time, there was no real immediate answer. and It was all like disorganized and confused. I don't know what happened there. Maybe Russia never thought that they would attack from Kursk. Maybe if they attack from Donbass and southern part of it near Crimea and things, if the Ukraine attacks from there, Russia would have had immediate response because they're probably expecting from there. If it happens, it's probably going to happen from here type of way. But I don't think nobody even like assume they would attack from Kursk or something. I'm pretty sure that must have been the case because the response just wasn't there. Everybody was surprised, right? It was a surprise attack. And they did it in a really calculated way with the American help, with the intelligence probably. Probably, nobody knows that, but uh, come on, it's going to be there, right? Five-wise intelligence and like high Mars and things, technology, I don't know.
or so it seemed, waiting three full days before announcing any plans to organize a resistance to what he deemed a terrorist incident in Kursk. This hints strongly that the Kremlin was completely blindsided and it was struggling to come up with a realistic response plan to the invasion. Local officials, however, were fully aware of the scope of the disaster, as 75,000 residents fled the fighting in the first few days alone. During one televised meeting, an acting regional governor was chastised and silenced after stating that Ukrainian forces had seized 28 villages and made the situation, quote, very difficult. That public admission of seized Russian towns, however, would resonate across Russia, prompting a wave of fear and outrage across social media. It was difficult to get a clear picture of the situation in Kursk, prompting even more Russians to turn to mill bloggers on platforms such as Telegram. Many attempted to toe the Kremlin line and downplay the situation in Kursk, but others offered a much more sobering and honest account. Russian defenses had either been bypassed or completely collapsed. Troops were being cut off and surrounded. It was a repeat of Ukraine's famous fall 2022 counterattack, only it was happening on Russian territory. And with growing horror, the Russian public began to realize the real cost of this war, because the casualty reports coming from the fighting were largely made up of conscripts. Russia has had a unique relationship between its people and its government regarding military conscripts. It was always accepted that Russian conscripts were treated poorly, with sexual, physical, and psychological abuse baked into the system, the rule of the grandfathers as it's known. Exploitation of conscripts by senior conscripts, regular soldiers, or their commanders was widespread and tolerated, even if they were used for slave labor in local farms or construction sites, with their superiors pocketing the profits of selling their labor. But after the disastrous invasion of Afghanistan, the Russian government set some unofficial conditions regarding its use of conscripts. The high casualties prompted Russian mothers to launch a national movement that threatened serious political turmoil, and the Kremlin would make a social... People were fine with their own children being abused. No, I think uh, nobody noticed until they noticed very late type of way, right? And it was all unofficial before people realized this type of shit is happening type of way, because that's just insane. That's one of your own people, right? This like, this is insane. Come on, man, really? How, does, how the fuck things like that happen, right? You know, part of me wants to believe that hopefully that's not as widespread as we think. But let's be honest, real, real, realist in me, the cynic in me thinking that probably happened more than often, which is kind of fucked up. That's just insane, man. Contract with its citizens. If they allowed the government to do as it pleased, it wouldn't interfere much in their lives and conscripts would not be used to fight outside of Russia. Thus, conscripts have been largely kept out of Russia's expeditionary fighting, though they were used in both Chechen wars and in a limited scope inside of Ukraine. The use of conscripts in Ukraine, however, set off a firestorm of controversy so intense that Vladimir Putin himself met with the mothers of killed conscripts months after the invasion of Ukraine, ensuring them that no more will be sent to the front lines. While there are still reports of conscripts inside Ukraine, it seems that the military has large mothers of killed conscript, and he said like no more is gonna like. What about my kid? But he's dead. Like okay, I guess it was more like a political message than anything else. I'm guessing, but like <laughs> that's a fucked up conversation, isn't it? Actually, kept its promise and honored Russian law forbidding the use of conscripts in expeditionary roles. It's strange that conscript casualties would be so controversial in a society that regularly tolerates truly apocalyptic levels of normal casualties and even the use of human wave meat grinder tactics. Yet these individuals are contract soldiers, people who chose to be there and accepted the risk, or they're prisoners, serving in the most dangerous positions for a chance at redemption. Russians accept these casualties even at levels that would prompt an immediate congressional investigation back home in the United States. But Russians are extremely sensitive to the deaths of conscripts, and that's bad news because as Ukraine forced its way into Kursk, this was largely all that stood in their way. Confusion quickly turned to outrage and grief as media released by Ukrainian forces made its way to the Russian blogosphere. While the public line from the Kremlin and state media was that the Ukrainian assault had been blunted, the truth coming from Ukrainian social media told a completely different story. Trenches of dead Russian soldiers, convoys ambushed by HIMARS, and elite Ukrainian special forces, and video after video after video of the capture of huge numbers of POWs, as many as an entire company of soldiers in one single instance. Russian POWs, many of them conscripts, had their hands duct taped over their eyes to immobilize and blind them as they were transported back across the border to prison camps. 
Interviews with 18-year-old soldiers gave truth to the harrowing tale of their capture, entire units decimated by far superior Ukrainian firepower, with the survivors quickly attempting to surrender. Once more, it was Russian mothers who were the first to organize, launching a social media movement to bring attention to the plight of conscripts. Within days of the invasion, at least 52 Russian families were inquiring with the Ministry of Defense on the status of their sons stationed in Kursk. A Change.org petition was created, imploring President Vladimir Putin to withdraw conscripts from combat operations, citing inexperience and a lack of weapons. Launched on August 7th, the petition had just over 9,000 signatures on August 15th. A full-scale offensive is currently taking place in our territory. Please save the lives of untrained soldiers in combat," read the petition. Unsurprisingly, the Kremlin was silent on the matter. In the subsequent days, even more casualties and POWs would follow. Russia had relied heavily on the use of conscripts on its border, believing that Ukraine would never dare invade Russia thanks to Putin's heavy use of nuclear threats to intimidate the West. These forces had little to no training and very poor equipment. According to one captured conscript, he went to the shooting range only one time and fired two rounds. That would be the culmination of his military training before being sent to Kursk to guard the border. Member of the State Duma Andrei Gurulev would try to assuage Russian fears, stating shortly after the invasion that, quote, in this conflict, conscripts in the Kursk region successfully defended an entire brigade's assault, and not a single soldier was lost. The truth was significantly different from his public statement, and Russia was finding loopholes around its social contract with the Russian people to not send conscripts into combat. Per a Russian source, as conscript forces were being evacuated from the fighting, they were allegedly forced to sign military contracts and sent back into the fighting. The difficulty for Russian forces is the deep integration of conscripts with regular army forces, with units having a mix of contract soldiers and conscripts. This makes it impossible to simply separate the two as they're being prepared to counterattack Ukrainian forces. With the invasion so fresh, though, it's unknown what effect this will have on the Russian people, especially as Ukraine continues to gain ground and Russia seems to be scrambling for solutions. A force made up of private military companies, FSB border security forces, regular army forces, interior ministry forces, and irregular forces like Chechen soldiers is being assembled to attempt to stem the Ukrainian invasion. But none of these forces share a joint command structure, and Russia has proven it's extremely inept at establishing clear chains of command and conducting joint operations. Inevitably, this means more casualties on Russian soil, with many of them being conscripts. There has been a sense of outrage as well within Russian society over the Ukrainian attack. Yet while normally one would expect to rally around the flag effect, surging volunteers into the military and popular support for the war, this does not seem to be the case in Russia. Putin has recently announced another round of cash incentives for volunteers, and the Defense Ministry has put out calls for personnel willing to dig trenches and set up defensive fortifications in Kursk with a high pay incentive. The use of high pay packets strongly indicates that despite Russian territory being invaded, the expected surge of patriotic volunteers to join the army has not happened, though the situation is still early and things may change. Indications are, though, that a growing fear has gripped Russian society, as it becomes abundantly clear from how the Kremlin is fumbling its response to the invasion that a new round of mobilization may be inevitable. While gaining ground in the east, Russia has officially lost more of its own territory in one week than it took from Ukraine all year long. Much of a massive American aid package signed into law in late spring is yet to arrive in Ukraine, and Western support continues to ramp up, with huge new aid packages announced in the wake of Ukraine's success in Kursk. If Russia is unable to defend its own territory and push out a Ukrainian assault with the forces it has, the public has little illusion about what might come next. Putin, however, clearly fears a fresh mobilization, given how deeply unpopular the last partial mobilization was. The question is, how will the Kursk invasion factor into the public's tolerance of another round of mobilization? And how will they tolerate a three-day special military operation to take Kyiv that has resulted in the first invasion of Russian territory since World yeah, this is just like, it's insane. I mean, obviously, how would people be patriotic when you are the one who invaded another country and in turn is getting invaded now? How are people supposed to like digest that, right? Uh, this is just all fucked up. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, the, another conscription is coming. I guess it just makes sense. Where things are going, who knows, right? Things are, like you said, is kind of early. Even though just like few weeks has passed, there's nothing in warfare terms. So who knows what this winter is going to be, how things are going to move forward. I don't know, to me, just like uh, threat of nuclear stays still high right now. I don't know, but people always tell me, they tell me in comments, that's not going to happen, he's not going to use that. There is this, this, that, there's deterrent. 
But you really don't know like when, when someone who was great power or perceived as great power is getting perceived like that, is being questioned by their own people, what would Kremlin do, right? If Kremlin suddenly decided we need to show our power in some way because we look really weak and we have to do this, uh, even fear mongering starts to rise up in their own ranks, like NATO might, in, NATO might attack us if we don't respond, if we don't keep to our word, if we don't show some kind of like a response right now, right? We are weak, this and that, who knows? And they might decide, like calculate that using nuclear uh, you know, attack right now feels more uh, appropriate than anything else. If they come to that conclusion, everybody's fucked. Because like I said, if one, guy, one, one country uses nuke, anybody can use nuke now because it sets a precedent now, right? Since Japan, nobody has used nuke. If Russia uses now, even small tactical one, that is it. It's like a line has crossed, right? You don't know what kind of decision somebody would make. So, yeah, this is just fucked up. All right, well, that was how Ukraine's invasion turned Russian civilians against Putin by the military show. If you like my next one, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.